When the father of Android decides to craft a smartphone of his own, you sit up and pay attention. That smartphone, the Essential PH1, is finally here, and I've been playing with it for a few days now. Since I've had so little time with the phone, I'm not here to deliver a final verdict. That's not really fair to anyone. For now though, let's take a closer look at what Essential has delivered and how it's held up over our first few days together. First off, you can't not notice the screen. It's a 5.7 inch LCD that stretches almost completely across the phone's face. Xiaomi's insane Mi Mix might technically have a smaller chin, but it doesn't really matter. It's always kind of thrilling to see a phone that's essentially all display. The most curious thing about it is the notch cut out of it to accommodate the 8 megapixel front facing camera. It's not the brightest screen I've ever seen, and you won't get those nice punchy AMOLED colors, but it's all really pretty. Just be warned, not every app plays nice with this expanded screen. Most notably, the dialer and Chrome appear as boxy as always, as do popular apps like Spotify and Twitter. It's definitely a bummer, and with Essential being so new, I kind of doubt developers will go out of their way to make their apps look good for one phone. Now, I've called other smartphones slabs before, but the Essential PH1 takes the cake. It actually reminds me a lot of holding an old iPod, you know, the ones with the metal backs and the flat sides and the rounded corners. The PH1 is a dense little thing too. The company's engineers say there's basically no extra space inside and I believe it. I haven't flung this thing around the office yet either, but it should survive just fine. The phone's frame is built out of titanium and the back is a glossy ceramic panel that, while durable, picks up fingerprints faster than almost any phone I've tested lately. So just be sure to keep that cleaning cloth handy. Speaking of the phone's back, there are two pins on the top right corner. That's where Essential's modular accessories are going to go. It's a lot smaller than Motorola's Moto Mod connector, and its placement in a corner means accessories don't have to ride on the phone's back like Moto Mods do. These are some pretty strong magnets too. We don't have the 360 camera in for review, but we could not shake one off in a brief demo session. With any luck, developers will embrace the interface when Essential launches its hardware development kit later this year. Also on the back of the phone is a 13 megapixel dual camera. Specifically, we've got one color and one monochrome sensor working together here. Photo quality seems pretty decent so far, especially because it marries color information and detail from those two sensors. Neither are very fast at focusing though, and switching between the color and monochrome modes takes just a hair longer than I'd like. Shooting with the Essential is dead simple too because the camera app has so few options to play with. You can shoot in auto, switch into the black and white mode, shoot a slow motion video clip or a regular video, and that is it. That's not necessarily a bad thing since most people tend to shoot from the hip anyway. Still, fans of pro modes and shooting in raw will want to look elsewhere. Now, if you were wondering what the father of Android would do with software when given the chance to build his own phone, well, the answer is nothing. The PH1 runs a stock build of Android 7.1.1, and really, the only difference we've noticed so far is that the notification bar is a little thicker than normal to fit that 8 megapixel camera sticking into the screen. That changes a little bit when you pop in a Sprint SIM, though. Once the phone's activated, you'll also have to deal with the My Sprint and Tidal apps. I honestly shudder to think what other carriers would have insisted on, so this Sprint exclusivity deal seems to have worked out pretty well. Performance has been very strong so far, as you'd expect from a phone running a Snapdragon 835 with four gigabytes of RAM and no extraneous software to bog it all down. I'm still working on our full performance tests, but I really haven't had any complaints. Ditto for the battery, actually. Essential hasn't publicly offered any battery claims for this 3,040 milliamp hour cell, and I wanna make sure I get the most accurate numbers I can. It's only been a few days, but I'm impressed with the level of quality Essential has managed to achieve. I don't think the company got absolutely everything right, but it's a pretty incredible first attempt. Hang in there, I'll be back with our full review very soon.